It is December 1922. Winter has descended on Paris as 31-year-old Elizabeth Hadley Richardson is about to board a train to Switzerland. She is headed for Lausanne, where her 23-year-old husband, a journalist, is covering the Conference of Lausanne for Canadian paper the Toronto Daily Star. Hadley's husband, Ernest Hemingway, has more than just journalistic aspirations. At night, he writes fiction, an endeavor his wife supports with great force. Versions of the story differ. In Lausanne, Hemingway has met journalist and editor Lincoln Steffens, who might have asked to see more of his fictional work. Or, Hadley has gathered all of her husband's work, packing it in his suitcase so that he might be able to work on it in Switzerland. The reasoning might be undecided, but the fact is this. Hadley Richardson is on her way to Ernest Hemingway, who is working as a correspondent in Switzerland. She has brought all of his fictional works, none of it published, including the carbon copies. Hadley arrives at Gare de Lyon, handing her bags to a porter before she heads off to purchase a bottle of water. She returns to her compartment, the suitcase with Hemingway's early writing all of his early writing is gone. The train ride to Lausanne is eight hours. She cries the whole way. Only two stories were saved. Up in Michigan, tucked away in a drawer, and My Old Man, currently in the hands of a magazine editor. Years later, Hemingway would remember the scene in which his wife tells him what has happened, written down in his memoir of his time as a young writer in Paris. I had never seen anyone hurt by a thing other than death or unbearable suffering except when she told me about the things being gone. She had cried and cried and could not tell me. I told her that no matter what the dreadful thing was that had happened, nothing could be that bad. And whatever it was, it was all right and not to worry. We would work it out. Then, finally, she told me. Hemingway could not believe it, especially the fact that all the carbons are gone. He hires someone to cover for him at the Lausanne Peace Conference before he takes the train back to Paris. He rushes home to the apartment and discovers that it is true. It is all gone. It was true all right, and I remember what I did in the night after I let myself into the flat and found it was true. With one stolen suitcase, all of Hemingway's original fictional work, written before the age of 23, disappears for what seems destined to be eternity. Within it, too, was the first draft of a novel about the First World War, which he never rewrote. One might think that such a blow would damage a literary career, but we now know that it did not. In fact, Hemingway would later see the loss of juvenile writing as a must for any writer who wishes to succeed. It is a part of stripping the language clean and to the bone, the style of which he would later be famed. According to the Book of Lost Books, Hemingway claimed the loss of the suitcase as the main reason he and Hadley divorced, a claim often made after a few drinks, and clearly ignoring the fact that he started his relationship with his second wife, Pauline Pfeiffer, while he was still married to his first. Hadley's mistake was perhaps a dire blow at the moment it happened, but it is possible, in retrospect, to argue that Hemingway might not have become the writer he became if it had not have happened. He was forced to make changes to how he wrote literature, to write faster, with shorter sentences and cleaner paragraphs. Most importantly, he did not stop writing. There might be a lesson there, somewhere.